Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in this particular video, let us try to implement one real-time data pipeline with Kafka, Faust and Snowflake using Python. So already in our previous video, we discussed several concepts about Apache Kafka, about the Faust stream processor library, which is nowadays becoming very popular for real-time data processing and this popular cloud data warehouse platform Snowflake. That also we discussed in detail in our previous videos. If you want to know the detailed explanations about these tech stacks, please go through the link given in the description box because those concepts will surely help you to implement and understand this particular project in detail, right? So without any further delay, let's first understand what is the architecture which we are going to implement in this project, okay? So in our real project, we will be having some source system and that is basically acting as a real-time source which will generate the data in real-time and the producer will read the data from that real-time source and then write in a Kafka topic that is basically denoted here with message bus. Okay, so here our producer will be sitting, right? For this particular demo, we are not using any real-time source, but rather we will generate some dummy data in real-time and publish in the Kafka topic which will act as a real-time source system, okay? Now from this topic, using for stream processing, we will be writing a consumer. That consumer code will read the data from topic and write in our destination database, which is sitting in Snowflake. Okay, so here I can write destination DB, right? And there is another database or table here. This particular icon is showing. What is this? So here in real time we are getting the data. Maybe for example, that data is containing information related to a car. Maybe some kind of sensor is kept in a particular road how many cars are passing per minute or per hour, what is the minimum speed or maximum speed, what is the average or mean speed, those statistics we want to compute. So for that, we are building a system, okay? So this sensor is capturing the data in real time whenever a car is passing and in that topic, the car related information are present like car ID, car type, maybe that is Honda or Tesla or some other kind of car company. Right, what is its speed and what is its unique number, those things it is capturing and all this data it is writing in destination database, okay? Now, parallelly business want to have a dashboard where with 5 second interval or with 10 second interval or with 1 minute interval, what is the minimum value of car speed, what is the maximum value of car speed, what is the average value of car speed or standard deviation or how many car passed, that is total count for that particular time frame or window those aggregated data business want to have in visualization format okay so here we will be storing our aggregated data okay so from that aggregated data we can create the dashboard now this aggregation you can do using a consumer consuming the data directly from topic or in destination db because you are having all the records in that you can basically window based on a certain time interval maybe 5 second 10 second and across individual windows, you can compute the statistics and then store in that aggregated data from which you can populate the dashboard. Different kind of visualization you can create. Maybe that is bar chart, pie chart or line graph, etc, etc. Right? So this is the overall architecture of the project what we are going to implement. Now, without any further delay, let us directly jump into the code. So here first what I will do, I will go to my notepad and I will start Zookeeper for our Kafka cluster. So here this is the zookeeper code because I am running in windows. So here I am running the bat file with zookeeper properties. I will go to PyCharm. I will go to a terminal and I will paste the code for zookeeper to start it. Then here what I am doing, I am basically starting a Kafka server or here this is called broker, right? With server start.bat file and server properties we are providing. So here I will open a new terminal in PyCharm and I will start my Kafka server. By default, it will be starting at port 9092. Even here, you can see that here it is printing that in localhost 9092, our server is running. Now here, because I already given you the context or business use case, that here we want to compute different statistics or capture the car speed related information in real time, which are getting passed by a particular load where sensor is kept, right? So the topic name I tried to keep kind of related to our use case. So the topic name is car speed. 
here we are mentioning the bootstrap server that is localhost 9092 and partition we are keeping 3 maybe if required in the consumer side we can increase the parallelism and up to 3 consumers parallelly can consume from this particular topic that functionality we can implement because here we are having 3 partitions right so here I will just create this particular topic okay so here you see the topic got created successfully now let's see the producer code it is a very simple code here we are inputting all the necessary modules so to publish the dummy data in our kafka car speed topic we are using kafka python library from there we have imported kafka producer here we have provided the topic name and then here custom partitioner so custom partitioner is basically defining based on what different messages related to particular keys will be sitting in what partition right so here we kept a very simple logic that the key part we are converting to integer and then we are dividing by total number of partition so we are having total number of partition as 3 so always we will be dividing our key by a value 3 and then whatever remainder based on that the messages will be going to different different partition if the key value is 6 then after dividing by 3 remainder is 0 so it will go to partition 0 if suppose the key value is 2 then after dividing by 3 remainder is 2 so in that case that particular message will be going to partition 2 suppose the key value is 1 in that case if you divide by 3 the remainder will be 1 only because 1 mod 3 is 1 so in that case that message will be going to partition 1 as simple as that and here we are creating our producer we are configuring our bootstrap server value serializer we are passing simple serialization technique that is string serialization and then here partitioner we are configuring that the partitioner should be this custom partitioner okay now here we want to generate that sensor data in a dummy manner so to generate that dummy data here we have taken some car list from different companies like honda ford tesla volvo etc and car speed also we have taken 1000 times we will be iterating from 0 to 999 and each time we will be picking up some random value out of it so car id is basically the value of e which is varying from 0 to 999 then car name we are picking randomly from this card list and then car speed we are taking randomly from this list and then here the capture time when that sensor has captured that particular card statistics that also we are consuming so here from python time we are converting that to unix timestamp and that particular data we are keeping here okay as simple as that and here we are printing that this data we are inserting and using producer.send using fire and forget manner we are inserting the data in our kafka topic right and in between each message injection we are giving a slip time of one second right so this is the producer code which i have written in this producer.py file in my pychart same code just now what i explained okay now coming to the consumer section it is also same like what first related code we have already written in our previous video only difference is this time the first consumer need to consume the data from kafka topic and then write in a snowflake table right so for that we need snowflake connector also so that we are importing now here we are creating our first application pointing to our this particular broker right then here user id password account these details we have to provide so here i am authenticating our first consumer and snowflake using user id password based authentication obviously you can use public key private key based authentication also which i already discussed in my previous video here i am creating the snowflake connection from there i am creating the cursor and then here what i am doing that some important commands before inserting the data in our table we are executing what are those that is to insert the data in the table we should use this warehouse if it is suspended we are resuming that the table will be available within ramu database within public schema and we should be using account admin role so all these important statements we are executing right and then here what we are doing we are subscribing to this particular card speed topic from our first application and here our agent is running that is whenever in the card speed topic a new data will be inserted our agent will be processing that using this particular function read and store so it will read the data from the kafka topic and then store in snowflake as simple as that okay so here what we are doing we are iterating and in that data we are converting to json using json.loads and here we are applying a simple insert into command to our snowflake table the snowflake table should be having the name car speed data within our ramu database in public schema right 
and card ID, card name, card speed, capture time. These things we are ingesting. Okay, and after ingestion, we are committing this, right? And then here we are starting our first application, and at the end we are closing the cursor and the connection. As simple as that. So here the same code I have basically written in this particular place. Okay, all I have to do just defining user ID, password, and account details. So I'll be doing that quickly. So here my Snowflake account is basically this one dgb19918. So here I'll be giving that and then dot here my region is us east one, right? So I'll be copying that us east one user ID password I'll be providing which I cannot show you. Rest code you can use as it is. Okay, obviously you can implement try catch block and make the code more reliable and fail safe with respect to exception for production system but for this particular POC this code is sufficient. Now here let me go to snowflake and explain you what code I have written. All the codes will be provided in the description box or in the comment section. So no need to worry about a single line of code. So first here we are dropping a database if it exists because I want to show you a fresh demo and then here we are creating a database Ramu and we are using that particular database. Here car speed data we are creating within Ramu database in public schema which is having car id, car name, car speed and capture time. Whatever in insert query we have written that same columns, same schema we are keeping in snowflake. Okay. And then here if I do select start from car speed data as of now we will be getting nothing. Right. Because here till now the ingestion is not started. And then here if you see not only our first application is ingesting the data in our destination DB but one more step is there that is aggregating over a time window. So that we need to do. So for that what I have done I have written a very simple aggregate related function. So let me explain that. So here what I am doing minimum value of card speed, maximum value of card speed, average value of card speed, what is the standard deviation, what is the count, all the statistics across one minute window I am computing. Okay. Now we need to understand how we can compute this kind of statistics in Snowflake with one minute window frame. So for that if you see in our this particular table capture time column is there which is basically nothing but unique timestamp. So here we need a particular mechanism using which we can group all the different different unique timestamp which are coming under same window and that window length is one minute and then in that particular window whatever data will be coming for that we are going to compute all these statistics right. So to do that in snowflake there is a particular function and that name is time slice. Obviously you can check the description box where I will be providing the documentation link but let me explain you in simple words what it is doing. Here as a first parameter you need to pass on which timestamp or date related column you want to divide into small small buckets okay. And then next parameter should be like 1 minute or 1 second, 5 second, 1 hour. What should be your slice range or window range? So here I am configuring that I want window slice of 1 minute. And then the start value of the window I want to get as well as the end value of the window also I want to get. So here this is how we need to pass the arguments. And if you are configuring start then it will give you the start time of that window. And if you are configuring the last argument as end, it will give you the end time of the window. So what will happen in the back end with respect to 1970 January 1st midnight, the time slice will start. And then with each one minute interval, it will be creating a window frame. And then whatever captured time or whatever time you will be passing here, that particular time exactly coming under which slice or which window where the window is created from 1971st January from midnight, that it will be returning. Maybe suppose it is coming at 100th window starting from 1971st January. So for that 100th window, what is the start time and what is the end time, right? For that window frame, that it will return. So here what we are doing, we are basically computing our capture time, that is our sensors has captured that car speed and car related information, right? So that particular capture time is coming under which particular window frame. And now all the capture times which will come within one particular window frame, on that we can use aggregate function to get all the statistics over that window, right? Same thing we are doing here. So from our table where capture time greater than here what we are doing here basically we are going 
from current date to 5 days back and for all those data we are computing the statistics okay and then group by our start time of the window end time of the window order by start time of the window so this is the simple code which will help us in aggregation so here why i am going back to 5 days with respect to current date and then computing the statistics the reason is many times in stream processing we face late arriving data okay that is suppose the data should be arriving from the sensor now but due to some server issue or network congestion the data is coming 2 hours after that okay so actually that data should be contributing in a particular window but because due to some issue as the data is coming late so that particular data will not able to contribute in the computation of statistics within that particular window frame where actually it should be sitting right so for that particular late arriving data handle we are always computing previous 5 days whatever statistics is there right i hope you are getting it and even i will be showing you with demo so this is basically our aggregation part what this particular system is handling now without any further delay let us start our producer and first applications so here what i will do to start first application i will go to terminal and i will write first hyphen a main worker l info okay so here i am starting one first worker instance but as we discussed that our kafka topic has three partition so we can start three consumers parallelly so for that i will start one more first application in a separate port okay in a new terminal right so here another first application started and then here what i will do i will start my kafka producer so here i will start running producer and you will see in our snowflake where earlier the table was empty here see the table started coming right now what i will do i will create a dashboard because the business team need to visualize this data in statistical manner from a dashboard right so let's prepare that dashboard all i will do i will open snowflake in a new window and then here i will go to worksheet and here i will go to dashboard and here i will create a dashboard dashboard name demo yt stats i can give and i can create the dashboard right here i will just paste my query maybe here i need to use warehouse then here compute wh so compute wh will be used for computing all the queries for this particular dashboard and here i can run this particular queries okay so here let me use this code and then here let me run this code okay so here it is basically computing now here i can go to chart and here i can draw different statistics maybe for example i want to compute average car speed when the window is closed okay within that particular window frame whatever is there and i want to show all the points i want to make sure x level y level both are coming okay x level is average car speed and here it is showing when the window ended so that is pretty much done and here if i just make this particular window properly here you will see that this particular image is coming maybe i can add another statistics related information let me run this one okay here use warehouse compute wh let me run this one right and in charts i will go maybe apart from car speed i want to compute count of cars how many cars are coming and when the window is closed for that window frame i want to compute so the points x axis y axis all i want to show and yeah pretty much it i can return and see here this particular window is showing how many cars came and this is showing average car speed right maybe another frame i can compute here i can paste this code use warehouse compute wh and this code i can run here in this space so here maybe i can go to charts and here suppose the maximum car speed i want to compute when a particular window is closed and in our case the window is 1 minute so within 1 minute window frame whatever cars are coming that statistics we want to compute right so the points x level y level i want to compute and then here i can minimize this okay right so here if you see 
that all this kind of dashboard you can create. If I click on run button, all queries will run parallelly and it will show you the latest information. So like here you can see average cut speed for 6th of March at 4.28 pm is 55. Then here it is 4.29 pm. Then here it is 4.30 pm like that with each one minute interval all the statistics it is showing. Similarly count of cut speed. Similarly max value. Max value is pretty much here we are getting 100 100 only. So that is fine. And even if required I can launch another first instance, not a problem. Okay, because we have three partitions, so I can launch three consumers. So maybe I can open a new terminal and then I can test it. Okay, so here 6068 port, it should be running fine. Let's see. So here it is joining to that consumer group. Actually, in the backend, rebalancing happened. And see, here it is inserting the data, right? Obviously, you can refresh to get the latest updates like for example if you consider the count here in this particular producer section we have given sleep of one second right so in one minute ideal count should be 60 to 59 like that fellows right because in each one second interval we are publishing a dummy data in our topic so ideally the count if we compute it should be either 60 or 59 like that for one minute aggregated result and that's what we are seeing here. Like for this case, at 6th March 4.32 p.m., it is showing 36 because race data is keep on getting published, not yet published completely. Once it is done, you will see at 4.32 p.m. also, the count of car speed is increased to 59 or 60 like that. Maybe if I run again, here you will see that, see here, 4.32, it is 61 like that. 60 to 61 or maybe 59 this kind of range only it will move so one minute time interval and one second sleep we have given so that's why this value it is taking right this is the average value like this it is taking and to observe how the late arriving data it is handling we will do one more experiment once all the data get published so here if you see our producer is running currently at key 352 353 like that and here we are publishing nearly 1000 records. So let's wait for some time. Let's the producer complete all the data published as well as let's see whether our first application consume everything or not. And then we will see the late arriving data scenario. Okay. So here our all the data got inserted or ingested successfully. If you check our producer, it has published up to 999 record. If I go to Snowflake and then here if I just do select start from our table order by car underscore id and then if i execute you will see that the maximum value here whatever it is having that is 999 okay so all the records were successfully inserted now let's refresh our dashboard once to see the latest data and here you will see that this is average cut speed this is count as we already discussed with one second interval we are publishing data in our topic so more or less the count of card is 59 to 62 61 like that okay only at the last window where our 999 records got published that last batch there it is little bit decreased to 53 and in the initial window because in the middle somewhere it is starting in between windows so that's why here little less okay and maximum card speed more or less same now let's try to insert some data which is late arriving data and then see that how the statistics are getting changed right so for that what I will do, I will go to my Snowflake query execution page and then here I am querying car speed data only. I am getting the capture time for a particular window. Okay. And the same condition what we kept earlier that only we are keeping. So this particular row is not doing some aggregation or something. This is just giving us that what capture time is coming under what window frame. And this window frame if you see. 443 to 444, 443 to 444. So that means these both Unix timestamp are coming under same window. And this window, one minute interval are getting created starting from 1971st January midnight, right? So here that computation is done by time slice. Let's consider one particular example. Suppose this is the capture time, which is in Unix timestamp. Cool. That is get basically got published by our producer. If you see here, we have published the capture time here in integer format. So here this is the capture time 
and that is coming under this particular time frame that is this is our start time of the window and this is end time of the window right so within this particular window what is the statistics let's see once so maybe here this query same query i can execute just having the start time as this particular value that is start time of our window and i can write timestamp 1 end equal to the end time i can keep right so here end time i have given and order by our start time anyway order by is not required because this is just a one single window frame so for that what is the statistic let's see okay so this is the statistics what we are getting i will just copy that and i will paste here so that we when we will publish some new data we can understand that the statistics are also getting updated okay so your average cut speed is this value the standard deviation is this value count of card in this particular frame is 53 and the start time is basically this one and the end time of that window is this one right now here what i will do for this particular timestamp i will publish some data okay now this is acting like a late arriving data for that window right because here the computation is already done for this particular window we already got the aggregated result now if some record is coming from the sensor with this particular unix timestamp that means it is arriving late it should be arriving within this particular window frame but it is arriving late but because we are going back in past for five days and then we are computing the statistics so we will be having no problem if suppose some late arriving data are coming within five days then also the proper result will be reflected in the dashboard okay so i will copy this particular unix timestamp and then here i will publish some data for this okay so to publish that that particular data here i have basically created this particular sample json suppose the car id is 2000 okay car name is honda so in this particular window if you see minimum car speed is 10 now let's publish some data within this particular window and let's keep that particular car speed as 2 or 3 less than 10 and then we will see for this particular window the information or statistics is getting updated or not right so here for this case if you see car speed i get 2 and for that same capture time i will pass one more car related information where the car speed value i am keeping 2000 okay so for this particular window as of now the maximum value is 100 but when one more record will be published which is late arriving data with car speed 2000 so then it, it will be maximum value because whatever data is already present within this window for that the maximum value is 100 right now if you are publishing for that particular window some data is coming with 2000 value that means it will be maximum as simple as that right and obviously in turn average will also change because minimum and maximum value are getting changed the count of car also will change from 53 it will be increased to 2 because two new records we are publishing in this case okay now to publish one by one record here i have written a simple code producer console paste.py the custom partitioner code is same only thing is here i am iterating a while loop i am taking user input and then i am putting that data in kafka topic as simple as that so here i will run this one and then here it is asking enter the data so i will enter the first data point for which the mean value for that window should change mean value as of now is 10 it should be decreased to 2 okay and here the count is 53 it should be increased to 54 let's see so enter the data i will enter this and it got inserted and now we can execute this and before that let me show you the dashboard also so end time is 444 so basically end time based window we have created so here if you see at 444 when that is end time for this window the count of car is 53 because we have just now published one record so now it should be changed so let me execute this particular statistics for this window again okay here i can give a semicolon and execute see here minimum car speed got changed to 2 so late arriving data also making no problem and count of car increased by one value that is 54 even in dashboard if i run and refresh this here you will see for this particular window frame here see count of car increased to 54 right so here mean value got changed we have seen here right for example average value also got changed little bit if you see here average value now is 49 
earlier the average value was 49.90566 but it is now 49.0185 so it is decreased little bit because here the mean value got decreased right now suppose we are putting some data point for which the cart speed is 2000 okay so the maximum value for this window should change so here i can insert one data and that is inserted now if i execute this particular statistics see immediately maximum value got updated and obviously average value got increased right and standard deviation also changed count of car from 54 got changed to 55 right even if i execute this particular query count of here see count of car here changed 55 here average value suddenly got increased because 2000 is too high so with respect to our normal average car speed across one minute window compared to that it is pretty much high and if you see the maximum car speed here in this particular last window where just now we inserted a record that also is reflecting with 2000 speed okay so all these dashboards are getting updated in real time with aggregated data business can understand over one minute window or two minute or one hour based on requirement you can configure in that window whatever statistics business can visualize using this and this is the code and using this particular first application we can build a real time data ingestion system from our real time source to snowflake cloud data warehouse platform i hope you understood this this is all for my this video all the codes i'll be providing in the description box or in the comment section if you find this video helpful then please like share and comment subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now and don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos thank you for watching